ladies and gentlemen, this is the pilot episode. Welcome, one and all, all in one, whatever. Uh, <laughs> my name is Brittany, and this is my partner in crime, Miss Jay Lee. We are going to be your hosts of WPMS. Well, and if you want to reach us, it's WPMS Radio at gmail.com. I feel like I need to be cheering that. Like, huh? just do, I feel like I need to be doing like a little cheer for our entrance. So. Maybe. I feel like we need to have a very big radio voice. W. We do. <laughs> well, you're way better at that than me. <laughs> no. Well, I've had a little bit of experience on a microphone. Not very much. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I am Brittany. You have no clue who I am. And that's okay, because we're going to find out who I am. But I was an announcer for OVW Wrestling, Ohio Valley Wrestling, whatever they want to call themselves now. Uh, I did that for a little over 10 years-ish, off and on, here and there. Dabbled in the ring a little bit, former OVW Women's Champion. I'm going to pat myself on the back right there on that one. Uh, it doesn't matter much here, but that's okay. It matters to me. It was fun. <laughs> <laughs> and my partner in crime, as I said, Miss Jay Lee. Are you going to introduce yourself? Are you going to dance? Yeah. Hello. <laughs> I'm Jay Lee. I am a professional wrestler. Um, how I met Brittany is I used to wrestle for Ohio Valley Wrestling. I'm the second longest reigning OBW Women's Champion of all time for now. So I'm going to take it from me, but sorry. Well, I ended your streak. Acting crazy. Um, so yeah, I have been seen on WWE, on SmackDown, on Raw, um, and then other indie promotions. So yeah. I've been doing this for about almost four years now and had a lot of momentum going and the stupid pandemic happened. So here we are. Here we are. <laughs> yes. And I, you know, I think that's kind of what led us to this podcast is, uh, I'm bored. Let's yeah. I'm so I'm so fucking bored. <laughs> <laughs> I am so used to entertaining. I am so used to being snarky. I think I have put my husband through so many different emotional roller coasters on this thing because I am bored. So guess what? Now you guys have to put up with it. Bailey has to put up with it. Uh, it's going to be all right, though. We're going to get through yep. it together. Uh, yeah. So WPMS, what are we hitting? So let's go. We got women because that's us. We got pile drivers because we were in wrestling. Wrestlers. And we like to kick so, ass. So. We do. so that's one thing. Then we have men because, well, we deal with them. <laughs> and can't live, have, can't, live about, can't yeah. live, live without them, right? That's what my mom always said. I never knew what that meant until I was so got one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, but then we have sex because, you know, it's a thing and we all love it. <laughs> it's going to be fine. We're going to go all over the place probably, but we're going to try to stay on one little track. And it's, it's okay with women. So, I mean... It is what it is, right? We have the right to change our mind. Isn't that that 90s song? Isn't there a 90s song, Shania Twain or somebody? I can change my mind anytime. Probably. I can't remember what it is right now. I'm talking in my head that I'm just like, uh, I love Shania Twain though. Is that a thing? Did that happen? The 90s was, the 90s was legit. I love the 90s. I was born in the 90s, grew up in it. So I need to bring that shit back. It was 30 years ago. I just want to say that. Did you see that Macaulay Coken tweeted the other day? Like, do you want me to make everybody feel old? I'm 40. I was like, no. I'm sure everybody freaking feels old because of Macaulay Coken. Saying that he's 40 now. He's still a kid to me, to be honest. Like, I still just like watch those movies and I know he's an adult, but I'm just like, you're still that little bitty kid that was in all those movies a long time ago. So. He's just stuck as Kevin from Home Alone. For sure. He's poor, never going to get out of that. The poor guy, though. I kind of feel bad. I don't feel bad because he's probably still getting money from that. But I do feel bad because he got thrusted into that entertainment industry pretty young. I could not imagine being that freaking young. Like, to be in it now, and I'm 30, um, <laughs> um, is so crazy to me. Like, the stuff we have to go through is insane. Could you imagine being a child not knowing what the hell to expect or what's going on? Like, this is your everyday job. Yeah. Like, I could not imagine. Like, Hollywood's really fucked up right now. I think the last huge, huge, huge thing everybody's trying to expose Pizzagate and Hollywood sex yep. trafficking and child trafficking. And here you thought, <laughs> like, oh, Steven Spielberg finds a young Drew Barrymore in a 
cafeteria or, or whatever, a restaurant, wherever she was at. And yeah. she becomes the next big star. And you never think what that poor child had to go through and how fast that kid had to grow up to deal with the things that they had to deal with because you would assume parents would shelter their children. But I believe parents get sucked up in all that crap too. And you get, and it, it is such a fast, it's like an undercurrent. Like you just get swept up in it so quickly and you don't even realize that you're swept up into it until it's there. Not, not sex trafficking. I'm talking about entertainment right. industry. Oh yeah. Like look at all the child stars, Britney Spears, um, Macaulay Culkin, um, the Olsen twins, like all Lindsay Lohan, all these people are so freaked up in their adult life. Like they're so Amanda Bynes, like they're so messed up like I cannot imagine living in that lifestyle as a child I don't think I'd want to live that profile of a life anyway like I would never want to be I don't think that big as a entertainer or um celebrity is that because like they're so messed up like you had no privacy you didn't grow up correctly or not correctly but the normal way is everybody else schools proms like anything like that like that's going to be so tough not to be able to like enjoy those things that everybody else around you is. Um, and speaking of the pizza gate, I was just shown over the weekend. It disgusts me. Have you seen Justin Bieber's uh, Instagram? Literally yeah. when you get off of here, go back, scroll for a long time. There's like pictures of babies, like legit babies that he hashtag yummy on. Yes. And it's still freaking there. And it was like pizza gate, you know, like all in the comments, like people were like posting the pizza emoji. So I want to know what the hell that means because that's literally so effed up. And I like loved him. I'm so sad. You, you love fever. I judge you now. <laughs> it's okay. I think it's just like, I'll forget I, like, not the look. I think it's just like the songs. <laughs> I'm, I'm still going to forgive you. It's going to be it's okay. okay. You know what? Yeah, I, it's so I, I went through a Backstreet Boys thing. Okay. So. Oh, no, I love Backstreet Boys, too. Like, girl. Yeah. Whenever I first started in the wrestling business with just being in the OVW, it was like 2009. I was 26, getting ready to close to 27. But, um, oh, I just said my age. Yeah, you did. It's okay. Yeah, I said okay. too. Don't you have to math. It's fine. But anyway, I went in and I was very quiet. I was very, uh, didn't really speak my mind. I played it very humble, played it very quaint. I was told like, oh, keep your mouth shut, stay behind the scenes and you're going to make it and it's going to be okay. Um, I heard all the things about guys saying like, oh, you know, if you have sex with me, you're going to make it. And I heard that kind of thing happened. I never believed that it happened. Well, I believed it, but I never thought it would happen to me, especially on a low <laughs> level of entering in at OVW. Like, that's, right. I'm not going to be trying out for some Tom Cruise movie where some director's going to come over to me and say, suck my dick so that you can get this part. That's not right. And, but I entered in and it didn't, it didn't happen on the same level, but it, it happens. Like, I <laughs> was over at a person's house that I thought was a friend. And they made a move. I turned him down. I continue to stay because I'm one of those people that I'm just like, oh, I said no, so he'll stop. Um, right. He tried again. Cool. And then when I left, I was like, I'm done with this situation. I wasn't even trying to be a bitch about it. I was just like, hey, right. I don't want, I'm uncomfortable. And he immediately was just like, if you tell anybody, I'm ruining your career. <laughs> I'm out. Did that just happen to me? Like, this, right. this shit's real. Ah! <laughs> Sorry, that's my Walter, oh my gosh. Walter is Walter. so angry about it being real. It's okay, Walter. It's over. No, no, he's mad. He's just he's scratching his back on the freaking anyway, he's a nightmare. I love him, but he's but so yeah, it happens and it happens on such a small level that I cannot even fathom how much it happens whenever you are on that larger stage, so to speak. Right. Oh, and yeah. somebody actually coming up to you and saying this is how you make it big and if you do this for me if you give me this sexual favor then I can make you a star mm -hmm. what? you know and, and I, I knew from that moment that even though I wanted to be in the entertainment industry I knew I wasn't going to make it big because I don't play politics well enough I uh -huh. very much like you're full of shit I'm probably going to tell you you're full of shit you have a couple chances to walk away from me, and if you don't take them, then you're probably not going to like me. 
you're probably going to get punched in the face or in the dick. One of the two. (laughs) I will. Like growing up, my dad had, my mom and dad had three girls. And uh, so being a family of all girls, my dad was so strict, which is a good thing. Like I, you know, we're so close now, my mom and dad and I, um, and my sisters are as well. But like my dad was terrified that something was going to happen to us like that. Um, my dad worked for WWS when I was a kid. He was security. So of course, when I told him I was going to be a wrestler, he was like, uh, fuck no. Like I know this situation. I know what happens. I was like, all right, well, I'm going to do it. <laughs> I'm an adult. But so he put us in karate and all this stuff. Like I was a black belt by the time I was like 11, I think. Like I was like in it very, very young. Um, and he just wanted us to be able to protect ourselves. He showed us so much stuff. And like, then we were like driving, carrying mace. <laughs> yeah. So I could not only imagine like being my dad and like having girls around, like how scary the world is. But here recently, like it's been happening to men too. Um, and I think they shut down when that happens to them. Cause we're so used to it. Like women hear about it all the time. Like protect yourself. This was what happens. You get sexually assaulted. You know, people do stuff like that too. But when it happens to men, they, I feel like they just like, they don't want to talk about it. They don't know what to do because, hey, it happens. It really does. But they're not, it's not engraved into their head like it is us because it's so normal. And that's really shitty to me that it's so normal that we just have to just, oh, that's, that happens. Like, why are you making such a big deal about it? Welcome to our life. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, it went, and, and it, and it, it, almost baffles me whenever some guy is just like, well, that doesn't happen. And I don't see that. And then it does happen to them or even, you know, people coming forward now that, you know, male child stars were abused as well. It's like, how do it's like, this is what women deal with. This is in right. our heads to watch for these signals, to watch for these red flags, to pay attention. And, you know, I know there's a big controversy. So if you sexualize yourself and you put yourself out there uh, Mm -hmm. in bikinis and bras and underwears and things of that nature, and you post sexy pictures on Instagram, because let's face it, sex sells. And if you post your titties hanging out, you're going to get more likes than if you post yourself. Oh yeah. Which is yeah crazy to me, but because I can do it. Like I'll post a picture and like a bikini or like a low cut shirt or something I get like 10 times more likes than like just a normal everyday thing so I mean I get it but here's the thing that we have as a responsibility as women is we know that that's getting us attention so we have to accept the we don't have to accept the negative attention so this is going to sound wrong and I don't want women to jump down my throat about this but I'm sure that I'm going to have some people understand where I'm coming from when Mm -hmm. you post pictures like that you have to expect that somebody is going to sexualize you and somebody is going to say something sexually perverted. I lost you on video. There you are. Right. Um, say something uh, I'm here. <laughs> perverted and they are probably going to offend you and you have a choice as a woman. You can ignore it because you're online and you posted yourself out there. Um, or you can get offended and get your panties in a wad. But the, the thing of it is, is that you posted it. So you knew you were going to get attention whenever you posted that. Negative right. and positive attention. But you wanted the attention when you posted it. So a lot of women I find, uh, this is something that really does annoy me about women in the entertainment industry, is they want to bitch about that. You know, they want to bitch about guys sexualizing them. Okay. They want to bitch about, you know, somebody saying something perverted. And I get it. But when you put yourself out there like that, you can't pick and choose who gives you attention. Uh, you can pick and choose who right. becomes your circle and who affects you, but you can't pick and choose who oh, yeah. whenever you put yourself out there. I don't know how you feel. Right. Exactly. No, I agree 100%. Um, I expect stuff like that happens. Um, I get nasty ass DMs all the time. That's like just really disgusting. Like, why you ever think it was okay to say something to somebody like that like and a lot of these are like married men old enough to be my dad anything like that like it's really disgusting but whatever I expect it but what I don't agree with is when they say like you're the reason why you were raped or you're the reason why like they try to sexually assault you because the way you dress no fucking way that is not the case at all like I do not give you permission because the way I dress to touch me to do anything 
other than you can comment you can look all you want but haven't you heard like you can look but you can't touch like you can't <laughs> do that like it's not okay so I agree with you on the expect to have that happen to you like like being sexualized and and people like comment and say stuff but I do not agree and I know you don't either to be able to act on it without permission because you need to have permission anyway even if I was willing to like you can't just like take it like or thank you Dan because I have news for you (laughs) yeah and and I that those are people that take advantage of the situation whenever you cross the line and you become touching that is Ever, it's you, that is socially unacceptable. No person wants to be touched against their will, so to speak. You know, like if you bump into me or you're testing the boundaries, you're going to get a warning. I'm not going to deck you right away. But if you continue to touch me and I tell you to stop touching me and you don't, right, you're probably going to end up with a black eye, a broken hand, or some sort of bodily <laughs> damage is going to be done to you and you're going to know the next time that probably shouldn't touch me um so yeah it completely- exactly no I will <laughs> fuck somebody up <laughs> I've broken my hand punching someone who kept continuously touching me and I was like do not do that and what do they do they did it again so I broke my hand and yeah. hey I'm okay with the consequences the consequences because of it like <laughs> <laughs> it's, okay. it's Monday isn't it it is a Monday it's Monday here <laughs> All right. It's Monday here. It's Monday. I don't know when this is airing, but it's Monday here. Um, it's Monday yeah. in our in our TV in our our phone, in this, computers, whatever this is. in this world. It's Monday now. Anyway, but yeah. So <laughs> I mean, whenever whenever a woman is uh, sexualized and everything, and, and people are like, you have to expect it. It 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 makes me mad and it aggravates me, but at the same time, I get it because it's like okay so we're sexual creatures I mean I can look at a man on television and say oh he's really sexy and he's really hot and if you go to male strip clubs I mean have you seen how dirty females can get they're so gross and uh uh -uh. and the the boundaries for a female touching a male are so much further than whenever a female has been touched or not touched by men. And Mm -hmm. I think that leads into saying that each individual has their own boundary. And if you want to call it shallow, if you want to call it favoritism, yeah, it, it is. Because you know, however creepy you are is where your boundary level is going to be. If you come out yeah. with Harvey Weinstein, then you better stay 12 feet away. Um, yeah. Everybody's staying yeah. 12 feet away right now. But I mean, if, but if you come <laughs> at me and you're like cool and you're laid back, then you're probably going to have a little bit more of an extended boundary of, you know, hugging me and sitting next to me, et cetera, et cetera. So manage your creepy level and don't be great. A better boundary. Like, don't be a creep. I don't think anybody's <laughs> ever met their soulmate by being catcalled down the street or, you know, I through window say down, that pretty girl. all the time and it pisses me off. Like, I hate, like, when I'm walking down the street and somebody's, like, yelling at me, like, oh, you think I'm just going to jump in the car with you and we're going to live happily ever after and get married? No, you're disgusting. You're probably going to freaking murder me if I jump in your car anyway. <laughs> like, what the hell? Like, what do you think? I watched too many murder shows here um, recently. Really scary. I don't know why I'm doing it to myself, but... I am, and I need to stop probably because it's making me more scared of the world. <laughs> no, it's okay because then if you have to cre- create a, or commit a crime, you uh, you know how to get away with it. Well, let's not put that on. <laughs> you said it on. <laughs> I I all I only meant um, anyway. So <laughs> no, but I don't know. I I think that being in the entertainment industry you automatically are kind of amplified uh male and female uh mm-hmm. people don't know you they know your persona they know what you put on tv they know what th- they know what right. the person is allowing them to know uh so it, it's easier to insult them it's easier to sexualize them it's easier to be infatuated with them because you don't know that personality and you don't know their boundary and I think a right. lot of get that when it comes to celebrities of wanting to know their personal you know opinions and their personal feelings and what they're up to and you know 
putting them down or even going into the, the bullying, you know, yeah. they have no idea what that person's mental status is. And they just, they're going through, yeah. Yeah. And they just assume because they're on TV that they're fantastic and they live this fabulous, glorious life. I just feel like they, they feel like if you put yourself on TV that you can just take it because that's what you sign yourself up for. It's almost like you're not human. You're just like entertainment in a TV show. So they don't look at it as, oh, this person has feelings. They're just like, oh, that's, you're just, that's what you're there for. You're there to entertain. So what you see um, is one thing, but behind closed doors, you have no idea. Like just everything on social media and TV is fake. Like, I'm sorry. Like, even if it's reality, you're only getting to see what people want to see of you. Um, so yeah, it might look happy go lucky. I mean, I'm not going to post about like having a shitty day and crying and you're not going to post that side or, you know, if you're going through depression or anxiety, you're not going to post about that. That's private. So it's just really sad to me that people like do that. And I know you and I both have had to deal with stuff like that, um, even as low on the celebrity scale, you know, like even just having a little bit of exposure, um, the hate that you get, like the, what people say to you, man, like, you're just like, how have you had the audacity to like say that to me? And like, I've literally had to learn how to like keep my mouth shut and not like fight with someone because like people's opinion of me is not my business and I've had to take a really long time to learn that because you're going to be fighting with so many people you're not everybody's cup of tea for sure and I'm a very free-spirited happy-go-lucky person and maybe some intense sometime with my personality but I mean it doesn't give anybody the right to like be a bitch or right. a dick so but they are so here we are <laughs> here we are and, and I think people are getting into hiding behind a, a screen like that's the thing with like this generation and like right now because people would just get knocked the fuck out and you're just like there it is like now I raise a keyboard warrior like they just now yeah, there's no there's no um repercussions of their words or their actions and it, it's funny because there's I see so many people that want to spew so much hate and so much backlash against somebody. And then when you see them in person and you try to have, or you even call them on the telephone, um, yeah, they immediately start retreating and they take back things and they go, oh, well, that's not what I really meant. And it's like, well, so this is kind of what you really said. So right. I'm not really sure mm -hmm. how to take it other than what you would exactly what you typed exactly and but then they immediately they'll delete things and then it, it never existed and it's like I still remember you saying that crap you know right exactly even tying into being wise for, for women there, there's Walter I mean people hide behind their their keyboard and hide behind their phone and they're even doing it when it comes to approaching women you know like or, or even harassing women and bullying women. I think that is bullying problem when we were growing up. I can't imagine having to deal with cyberbullying as well. God, you no. know, I was bullied whenever I was in school. I was bullied all through, you know, middle school and high school. I didn't fit in, but I couldn't imagine going home and still having to deal with it. Right, agreed. And it, and I, I, I don't understand why people so much faster than like I'm a bitch the majority of the world is can be pretty negative but the fact that negativity spreads so much faster than positivity breaks my heart because it's so sad and it's it's news for a day you know but something horrible goes on and you know it's all you hear about I mean we have exactly COVID, we have Black Lives Matter, and we have child trafficking, and it's an election. It, <laughs> oh God! And, and the, all of it matters, and I understand that all of it matters. But you're getting this side and this side, and we we have to understand the truth is going to be here. You know, it's not the media is a disaster. Like the media messes so much shit up. Like. They literally, it's insane to me. And we kind of know because being in the limelight and, um, you know, wrestling and stuff like that, 
we know what they can do to tweak stuff. Oh yeah. And to get a good story. So it's just insane to me, like that people are taking information that's real and twisting the shit around so much to where it's so different. And I don't watch the news or anything like that because of that, because I'm like, what's real and what's not like the media has like just with COVID and the black lives matter and everything. Like they just really have torn it to hell and like just gave so much wrong information. I mean, like look at like the fact checks now and like what Twitter for like Trump and stuff like that, because everything's just like not real, not the true facts. Like it's bullshit what they do so it's insane and that's filtered because who's the fact checker you know what i mean it, 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 that that person isn't necessarily you know being skewed one way or the other they're right. likely behind it too and i think that's why you have so many conspiracy theorists is that nobody knows because you know you can be sitting here looking at something and somebody tells you oh that's blue but to a colorblind person that's green it's exactly and they had that that little dress thing on like oh, yeah. Facebook and that stuff. Oh, because, yeah, I'm gonna argue about that. Uh, if you want to argue, I'm just saying 2020 has been hell, and aliens were proven real. Well, they don't want to come here, so we're fine. Yeah, yeah, we're like the stinky kids in class. Like, oh, I'm just going by. But like, my oh. thing is like, why isn't that the biggest news? I understand we've known all along, but why isn't that not the biggest news this because year to it's me? Not right in front of us. Like, you don't have some green teacher knocking on your door saying, hey, I'm here. Oh, I wish they could take me from Earth right now. <laughs> Jeez. Say that. I need somebody to do this podcast. With you and you're well, do yeah. Me too, then. Go with. I mean, it could be, like, something like Avatar. We don't know. You know, like, so cool. Like, another planet. Like, yeah, know. nobody wants to come here. Like, we suck. <laughs> you know, it, it's just and I, I, I think that I, the biggest reason people suck is because people want you to fit inside of a box. Mm-hmm. And when you don't fit inside of their box, they want to hate you. Uh, they want to find something wrong with you. Um, right. Find, you know, if you're a celebrity and you're making it, you know, you're going to be scrutinized because somebody's jealous, somebody's pissed, you know, or you you talk out of your ass because you think your shit doesn't stink. Right. So it, it's both sides of the spectrum. You know, you can yeah. have a really cool person and, you know, everybody wants to hate them anyway because, yeah, so why not? I just want to hate you. Haters going to hate. They are. And I think that's just the way society is going to be for the rest of the life. And It's been like that for freaking ever as long as just able to show their children like, because everybody's bored uh we were on lockdown for how many months trying to get started i'm still not back to work uh right. I mean, you work through the whole thing but yeah. people are trying to get back to normal lives it's not um everything is this is a huge adjustment and it's all going to be reconfigured and eventually things are, I'm, I'm certain people are going to be back in person at sporting events and wrestling events and all that great stuff. I think we're on our way there. But yeah. I, I think, I, you know, people have ruined relationships online at this point because oh, yeah. uh, so this is the worst for relationships. Like even like in mine, like, and I, I, I know we've spoken about this before, like it's tough. We both date you're married, but I date a wrestler as well. And to both be in the limelight in the relationship is so freaking tough. And social media has been the most of what revolved around most of our fights. Like that's what most of them revolved around with social media is stuff like that. Like being on your phone constantly. Like there's like, I used to watch like I've seen like my grandma, we go somewhere and she doesn't have her phone, not taking pictures. Like everybody, you know, we're all taking pictures and stuff. And she's like, I'm just living in the moment, you know, like I love and hate social media. Um, I love it because it does give us a platform. Um, it gets more people noticed, um, to be successful in the industry that they want to be in. But then again, I was just like, what price do you pay to have that? Because it has killed so many relationships. You're freaking soul like it's it's ripped people apart and like just made them I mean look at the canceled culture right now like everybody's 
canceled. I hate it. <laughs> and it and and you and again it goes back to you don't know what part is true and what mm-hmm. part is just somebody took a, this sentence out of a story and ran with it. Yeah. And that's what took off because somebody wanted it that way. Right. And then you wanted to believe it. So if you and it goes into so if you're looking for a yellow car, all you're going to see is a yellow car. You yeah. know, so if you're looking for something, you're going to find it. And whether it's right or wrong, you're going to find it. Right. You're going to connect it. You're, you're going into conspiracy, you're going into conspiracy theories with touching on this, but there are some conspiracy theories that I, I can get behind. And there's some right. that I'm just like, guys, you're kind of reaching. Yeah, yeah. Some of it I'm with you. I could really, really get behind it, but some of it I'm, it ruins people and it ruins mm-hmm. careers and ruins people's livelihoods and some deserve it, but oh yeah, you know, do, do they all deserve it? You know, because no. I mean? if I'm sitting here and I know for a fact, like I've gotten into fights with family members now at this point because of something that they wrote, they miscommunicated. I, we try to have a conversation and ended up in a fight about it. And right. It's like, if we would have just had the conversation in person, when I try to call you, Yep. It probably would have been a lot easier, but everybody wanted to yeah. have the keyboard, and I did it too. I was guilty myself, <laughs> and it ended up being a disaster, yep. you know, and it ended up canceling our relationship, and it's just nobody wants to admit that they were wrong. Nobody wants to admit that they miscommunicated, and people want to ruin other people's lives. I, oh, do. Sure. I, I think that people get a thrill out of knocking somebody off their high horse and keep it's it. never anybody happy. It's always like the miserable people that are the ones doing it. Like, have you ever seen like somebody like loving their life in their zone, like ruin someone else or try to at least like everybody that's ever like bullied me or anything like that, like had an underlying issue with themselves. Um, we mentioned it. Like I was, beyond bullied in elementary school to the point where like I would get kicked hit and stuff like that too they had to pull me out of school because it was that bad like my mom and dad were scared from like my safety these girls used to be my friends it was over some stupid boy I mean I'm in fifth grade like I'm 11 okay what am I gonna do and then my dad like that's when he started like I was already in karate but he didn't want us to like fire and things so my dad was like hey you pick the biggest one and you knock her out and I don't want to hear it like I will have your back on it like I come home with bruises and like now I see all these girls that did that to me and the lives that they live is insane insane like it's literally like they're either in prison or they have 10 kids by 10 people and they're just like miserable and like they were like that then but you know it just it goes to show like what what the people do to you is because of them. It's because of themselves. They hate themselves, to be honest. Like, if you if you can be that mean, so yeah. And you hit the you hit the nail on the head when you said uh, you don't really see the positive people in the cancel culture. No, um, you you see those people that are searching to bring somebody into their negativity and consume them with their negativity. And it's the Karens. It's the ones that just want to be in control constantly. They they right. can't be in control, then something's wrong, and they demand they demand you know you 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 bow down to me. You owe me. The world owes me, and yeah. they don't understand. It. And this goes for everyone, including myself. The world doesn't owe you shit. No hell no. Nothing owes you anything. Like nothing. <laughs> And oh, shit. Like, that's what people are just entitled assholes. Yeah. And if you give to the world, then, you know, you're, you're giving to the universe and you're giving to people, then you can't expect anything in return. Because if you expect something in return, then you're not doing it out of the goodness of your heart. And right. you're doing it for that return finger. And then you're going to turn into the miserable person when you don't get that expectation met. Exactly. And so if you just say, I'm doing this for you. We're going to have fun doing it. I need to do it because I can or because I want to help or because when you help somebody, you inevitably are helping yourself because right. you are feeling better. But you have to receive that. You can't expect oh, yeah. them to give it to you. 
exactly. You're going to go both ways for sure. So whenever people are going after it, and I'm not, there, there are people that need to be canceled. I'm sure Harvey Weinstein needed to be canceled. You know, Jeffrey Epstein <laughs> didn't kill himself, but needed to be canceled. Who, who's to say, I don't, I don't even know, like, what is it? Ellen is mean to people, you know? Yeah. And do we know that though? Or did she say something snarky, like what we would say, and somebody got butthurt about it? Oh yeah. People, that's another thing. People these days, like, you know, Rip Rogers was, is, is, was my wrestling trainer and he's a, he's got a mouth on him, and, but he spits the truth so much. People want to be patted on the back and told they're pretty all the time. Yeah. And they, that's, that's, I think that's how we've gotten into this participation trophy bullshit. I'm all for making everybody feel good about themselves. I want to be that person that makes oh, yeah. everybody comfortable with being who they are and no matter who they are. Right. But if you're an asshole, then I'm going to match your energy and I'm going to be an asshole. Oh, yeah. But if you're cool, then cool. You know, even if our time together is five minutes because you annoy me. But if you're cool, then I'm going to be cool for that five minutes. And then I'm going to be like, all right, I'm out. Right. See ya. <laughs> so yeah. I'm done with this. It's, it's cool. But I, I've met so many people that people have told me, oh, he's a dick, you know, and they were nice. totally nice yeah yeah I'm like but like I, I was a fan at the time of Batista for example lots of people were sitting there saying oh Batista's such an asshole I can't believe right. it. Blah, 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 blah. you never go again. I don't know all this doing he walks out we were waiting for a friend and we were at a hotel that had it was down in Lexington at the hotel connected to the arena and right. uh, we were waiting outside and he walked out and he's hard to miss I mean you see that man and, and I'm like oh. Yeah, he's a big dude, and he looks like a wrestler. And I'm like, yeah. okay, I'm going up to him. I don't care. I'm not. I'm not that person. He's off, you know. And the girl that we were waiting for, or the girl that was waiting for the person, and we were waiting with her, runs up to him immediately, and she's like, "Oh my God, Batista, a fan girl, right?" Right. And, and I'm like, "Okay." And you can see the look in his eye. He was just kind of like, oh, I want to "Yeah, okay." Well, this is also right. after like a three-hour show. Who knows how long he's been on the road? Uh, who knows what other crap he's dealt with? He's probably sore because he had a match. All that other great stuff, right? So right. I'm like, all right. He took the picture. I took the picture of those two. I took a picture of another girl that had come out. I think he took three or four, maybe five pictures with people that had randomly spotted him through that area. Right. At the end of it, I like walked over to hand the girl her phone, who was still standing there bugging the crap out of him, and he was just staring at her like, shut up, please. Right. <laughs> and I was like, okay, guys, I'm out. And he goes, well, don't you want a picture? And I was like, uh, I guess. <laughs> right. Maybe. Yeah. I think I'm supposed to say yes. <laughs> yeah, is this a trick question? Like, yeah. what's going on? I'm like, I don't, wait, aren't I supposed to ask you? But he said it in a <laughs> could think he was like thinking that I was like too shy to ask or whatever right and right. yeah please I, I would like a picture so I took a picture with him and when it was just him and I standing there he was like oh okay well have a really good night da, 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 da. and he was like having somewhat of an interaction with me and it, like trying to get rid of everybody else and I was like okay so you're actually a cool dude so right. why is everybody shitting on you uh, because even though he was tired, even though he was grouchy or whatever was happening that day, he took that time, he took the pictures and he was still a decent person enough to say, she's not comfortable asking me for a picture, but I still, I'm still going to be there. You know what I mean? As an entertainer. And, yeah. um, I think people don't give entertainers enough credit going into that, back into that is that people just want you to always be turned on. Uh -huh. as an entertainer. Yeah. And it's like, dude, you know, they have bad days and they can be shitty people. And yeah. They don't always have to be you're nice. Allowed, you're allowed to be like, who hasn't snapped in their life or just been a freaking asshole right. to somebody, even like your loved ones, you're an asshole to sometimes because sometimes the world just weighs on you. Your mental health is not there. Like it, it's crazy. And I couldn't imagine being like that every single day, like on the road and stuff like that and not being able to allow to just decompress. Like somebody's always got to be on you and like to just not be able to walk to your car, like a normal person or go to the mall or anything like that without being noticed. So they're allowed, we're allowed to have bad days. And like, 
I don't think I really got that until actually I started wrestling because yeah, did I fangirl? Of course. Like somebody you see all day, you look up to them. Um, I got to meet Lita like behind, you know, backstage at WWE and I was doing extra work and I thought I was going to like poop my pants, but like I didn't, like I kept my composure and it was, Hey, when you talk to them, like a freaking human being, like they are, Hey, they're going to open up to you and stuff like that. And like, we weren't allowed to really, you know, interact because they have a job to do. Um, but they come to you and like, if you're not like freaking out, like, Hey, like, let's take a picture like stuff like that. They're like, they'll come to you. They're, like, they love to entertain. That's why they're an entertainer. Right. So, but don't, yeah, don't like be an asshole because they're being an asshole because you won't leave them the fuck alone. <laughs> like calm down. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think people, the cancel culture just gets so wrapped up into their own expectations of a person and right. you know, whatever it, it, it's immediate. If you don't do exactly what they think, then somebody's jumping on their ass and they want them to fail. And right. again, I'm not talking about, you know, the Harvey Weinsteins or, you know, the, the whoever Tom Hanks is that the other one, but, it, yeah. but also some of it, none of your business you know mm-hmm. what I mean I mean if they're behind child trafficking or they're behind sex trafficking by all stretches that's the business hashtag save the children but yeah. I don't know, hashtag pizza gate if it's real destroy them I get it but if somebody's having a bad day and you want to just destroy them because you want to be an asshole too no you know what makes you any better like that's right. the thing what makes anybody any better to like oh they're an asshole to me so I'm gonna blast them and do this stuff like that doesn't make anybody any better like you like you we said like you literally do not know what's going on behind closed doors like they could have just lost someone someone could have cancer in their family they could find out they had like look at the uh what's that guy's name the one that just passed away that was uh the yes like he was literally dying of colon cancer no one knew he still was putting on movies and everybody's joking on him for being a crackhead because he lost a lot of weight that's the thing like don't be an asshole. Don't be a dick. Like, why are you making fun of this guy? You have no freaking clue. He was literally still producing movies for these shitholes of people. And like, you're going to just shut on him. Like frown upon him because, and like talk shit about him because he's so skinny. Like, look at, he died. Like how shitty do those people feel now? Posting that online, talking crap about him and like had no clue, no clue. Oh, I'm sure, I'm sure some of their scenes, their stories are going to say, oh, well, if he would have only said, you know, oh, if he would have only said, it's personal. It, 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 it's going to die of cancer? No, I'm sure nobody wants to say, hey, I'm going to die. I have colon cancer. Like, who wants to deal with that? And he ran that out. He was, just wanted to go his own way. And that's his, what he wanted to do. Like, you're allowed to do that. And again, it goes back to, they will let you know only what they're going to want you to know exactly Media, celebrities entertainment anything and everything I think with social media it's opening a lot of doors for entertainers to let you in kind of to their personal life and I exactly. think it's breaking a lot of entertainers out because I I do follow some of my favorite actors and things of that nature and some of them are like I, I'm like hey like I want to see more please yeah oh yeah oh I'm like oh yeah well I guess I can't expect them to because it's really, you know. Like some of them I'm just got that. <laughs> social media. Like Johnny Depp just got social media. Um, Jennifer Aniston just got like an Instagram. Like, but they come from a way different time than like today is because they were famous before social media, before the internet. Look <laughs> legit, like legit. Um, so some of them like don't even have them. Like there's some celebrities like don't have anything um and they're still huge they're still celebrities like I know like I think it's Jennifer Lawrence I don't think she has really anything and she's a huge huge name in Hollywood um you don't have to but it's all about like how you market yourself other places um but yeah it can be the greatest day on earth or it can be the worst day on earth so you just gotta pick your which way you want to go with it hopefully if you more people start to do positive things on there um but then again no it's earth <laughs> people are it's, crazy but I, but I think the problem is is that I think whenever you you normalize mental health um I think that 
I, I think it's something that needs to be done. I think mental health does need to be, uh, you know, normalized. I think that oh, yeah. it's okay to post your bad day. Um, it's okay for somebody to see like, hey, not everyone is perfect. And people got so mad when we were like started this quarantine and, uh, you know, celebrities were like, stay home. And they were like in their giant mansion. And yeah. they're like, oh, easy for you to stay home. But yeah, easy for you. <laughs> yeah. You also don't know now. Now, granted, you know, is your quarantine life going to be better if you have a jacuzzi and a pool and a freaking bowling alley in your basement? Yeah, but you don't know what's happening behind their doors. Exactly. And it's not for what I think people are using, you know, social media as a gateway to express their opinions about others. And I don't think that that's always fair either. Right. You know, like it. It doesn't matter. If you don't like it, then just keep going. Right. Yeah, exactly. You don't have to watch that TV show. Like, you don't have to look at those pictures. Hey, there's an unfollow button. Block them if you don't want to see it. Like, but people love to do that, though. That's oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But in, this, in the same aspect, also, I don't think that it's for celebrities to, you know, if you're going to say one thing of, as a celebrity, then you need to follow that. So if you're going right. to say, hey, don't sexualize me well then don't post yourself in bra and underwear right or if you're gonna say you know live modestly then you know don't be wearing product kind of yeah thing. exactly yep and it's like you know as a celebrity you also have to practice what you preach but again it, it's not my business you do you and i'm gonna do me and i'm not gonna hate on you or go into a cancel culture mode just because you do it no exactly you the only time i like i'm not call it hate but like I would never dislike someone because someone else does like I just like people if I just like anyone which is not a lot of people um I just like you because how you treat me or you know like I don't go off of that like you I will stand up for like my sisters my family and stuff like that but if you don't mesh with my sister we mesh then hey stay away from each other but I won't tolerate of course my, them like bashing them but Right. or anybody else that I love but like I'm not gonna hate on someone for what if I don't know them because I don't know them and two like yeah like I'm just like if you treat me right or you're good to me nice to me and you hate her because you always vibe don't match then that's on you not me like not everybody's gonna like your vibe like you gotta have you know a tribe with your vibe so yeah. you gotta find uh, those people you gotta find your people there's people meant for you and there's people not and there's people to meant to come and teach you a lesson and that's just the way it goes and if everybody would have a mentality like that it would be like world peace <laughs> i should be in the pageant <laughs> we pack it. let's just say this is how easy it is right here on this podcast everybody just either love each other or don't like each other and if you don't like each other get over it and don't talk to anybody talk it up, buttercup, and don't you talk, talk to everybody, everybody. and you don't have to cancel somebody just because you don't like them. It's going to be okay. It really will. I promise. No, you, you're not going to, if you are love someone, you're going to sleep just fine at night. Like probably even better because you don't have hate in your heart. Right. God. Let it go. It's going to be fine. We're going to be Let like frozen go. here. Let it go. I know that's what I was just about to, but I'm like, <laughs> probably shouldn't sing. Um, we got everything. Yeah. I'll like play the song or something, but I'm not going to sing. Nick, we we can we can edit it in at at the end whenever we okay. it. yeah do that do that we can edit us for uh, okay and then <laughs> okay but uh, no I I just I think that with this podcast I think we can kind of create a platform where people can just say what they want to say one you are probably not going to offend us if you do offend us we're probably going to watch you but we're not going to yeah no um, it's we'll just. Be- yeah. We'll just tell our opinion. We won't we'll, even like it. Yeah. Yeah. We'll just Do take it our opinion and you might not like it, but it's going to be all right, too. It we is. can't hurt our feelings on this show. Like, uh, do we even have feelings anymore? You know, <laughs> I do, and I'm not going to lie, because I, I have some really hard days, and there are times that I'm a really big girl, and I just want somebody to tell me I'm pretty. But oh, I, doesn't. Then, you're pretty. I think you're pretty. I think you're pretty. Um, but then there are times that I'm just like I don't care and if you care that's not my problem it's a big deal yeah and for sure 
99% of the time, well, maybe 97% of the time, probably don't give a shit, and I'm probably gonna let you know that I don't give a shit. No. Nope. Uh, and if you think that I give a shit, then... You're wrong. Sorry about it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no matter what anybody says to me, trust me, I've been called some really mean things. Like, I think being bullied at such a young age, like, I have such a thick skin. Like, I could give a rat's ass what anybody thinks of me. Yes, do I want to be a good person? Of course. Do I want people to remember me as being nice and, you know, helpful and, like, just a genuine person? Of course I do. But if you don't like me, like I said, it's not my problem. It's yours. Um, I'm not an asshole. I don't do malicious things to people. I'm not mean. Um, I'm a little crazy, but what one woman's not, <laughs> um, and it is what it is, but yeah, like, that's the thing. Like, I want people to have that mentality too. I wish everybody did like not caring what other people think about them. Cause that would help out a lot too, because mental health is so serious. Like I have always like struggled with like, anxiety and stuff growing up, even a little bit of depression. And like, you're always so scared to talk about it because you don't know what people are going to look at you differently. And like, once you just like let go of like what people think of you and like, you just start like caring about yourself. Even if you don't have a lot of friends, like I don't like, um, and I like it that way. Like I have people in my circle and, and that's about it. But I don't like go out of my way to like make more, I guess, which might not be a good thing because I live in my own bubble. But I mean, you don't have mental control. health is important. And I don't want to like, jeopardize my mental health to have a relationship or a friendship right that isn't gonna work or gonna bring me trauma or pain you know like I don't want that like you said a lot of people need to live with live that lifestyle you need to understand or people should understand that if if you can make yourself happy and you aren't jeopardizing yourself your morals your thoughts uh you can surround yourself with people that matter. It's great right. quality over quantity because your circle is going to be small. But then you're going to have to trust that you don't have to be on, like we were talking all the time. Yeah. All the time. You can have that day where you're like, you know what? I don't feel like coming over because I just don't feel like coming over. You don't have yeah. to waste energy coming up with an excuse. It, it, people are so worried about offending or hurting somebody else's feelings and don't want to be honest anymore. Or yeah. one is hiding behind a keyboard and they don't care that that other person has feelings. But there just has to be a point in time when people just mind your own business. Yeah. And it's going to be fine. You're going to be okay. Uh, you don't have to cancel somebody because you don't like them. Um, you, you don't have to beat the person up. That's a, now, if they say something stupid, yeah, sure. I'm probably going to call them out too. If they say something really bad, but if you don't agree with it, then just keep going because you're not going to change their mind on the internet. Keep it open. And if you're in the relationship stuck in this quarantine, don't kill your partner. Because <laughs> they, they're going through it too. And even if you know them, and love them you don't know how they're... What's at. in their mind? They don't always tell you what's up. Yeah. I don't know how to say everything that's in my head and oh, stuff like that. Like, you got to have your me time, too. Like, I'm so about me time. I'm, like, such a loner. And it's I'm totally okay with it. But, like, like I said, man, like, it's so nice to just decompress. But the quarantine, I feel like it's been a lot for everyone and mental health. And it's been really scary because, like, there's so many people, like, kids, they go home to abusive parents, and they're stuck there, they don't eat, you know, they don't have somebody to love on them, or, like, you're in an abusive relationship, man, or a woman, um, or you live in, like, a shithole, and, like, that's all you can afford, like, it's, it's so sad, and, like, people who are depressed, and, like, by themselves, like, I'm sure it's been super tough, like, this has definitely been trying times for everyone in the entire world. The people are bored, and I think people are, jumping on every opportunity that they can to make a change and I think a lot of it is needed um black obviously black lives matter movement um yeah it's needed but there are even things that I question with some of their stuff because of the way the media spreads the propaganda and there's it, yeah there's a difference awesome between shuffles and causes divides because exactly 
everybody thinks like, oh, I think you should burn the city to the ground because Black Lives Matter and all Black people and all, you know, people that support Black people support rioters. No. no. You know, and again, it goes back to you're only searching for what you want to see and then you latch onto it and then you want to hate everybody that has yeah, the And The media is definitely, I mean, I understand like before the media, um, there's always been racism, period, like since the beginning of time. But the media has definitely made it so much worse, especially here recently, um, because there's a difference between rioting and protesting. Um, we live in Louisville, Kentucky. There's been a shit ton of uh, protests. Breonna Taylor's from Louisville, the one that, you know, she was killed um, wrongfully. Um, they have not done anything to right the wrong of, of someone losing their life, an innocent person. Not everybody's innocent. I get that. And people have skeletons in their closet. That's an everyday thing. But does somebody need to lose their life? No, absolutely not. Um so it's, it's crazy to me that people are like just hanging on to like the the rioting um because there has been some here there's been some dumb ass people in louisville who's literally like tore down the city and then like they're they're it's taken away from the people who are protesting quietly and you know trying to like make a difference than yeah. the rioting but, it, but then at the same time you uh, you have the ones that are are sitting here saying because i've even said it too like stop focusing on the rioting doesn't mean that I'm okay with it. It just means that you're literally allowing them to take away from the meaning behind it. So you're right. giving the person another piece of ammo to say, this is why you're wrong. Right. Instead of bringing <clears throat> up the voices that are saying, but this is what we're trying to say is really wrong. So, you know, rioting shouldn't go along with protesting, but murder shouldn't go along with arrest. And you're always going to have that huge explosion because this person doesn't believe in writing, but this person doesn't believe in murder. And what people don't get is that we're all right here. Right. Is this person's communicating this way and this person's communicating this way. And we're saying the same right. thing. The narrative is just flipped. And the priority. Exactly. For sure. But I don't think that there's yep. anyone out there, even if you're saying defund the police, I don't think there's anyone who wants mm -hmm. a, police, a good police officer to die or to get hurt, you know? And I, I, I yeah. believe that if anyone was still in trouble, they're still going to call 911, you know? And you're still going to... Oh, yeah. We're, we're all on the same path. We're all on a track. And we just have to stop finding the divide. You know and realize like hey God. You know, we, we can work together and it's going to be all right but our politics have turned it into left versus right people go along with left versus right we're arguing over wearing a face cloth because you think you're getting controlled i'm just i'm i'm so tired of this flash it's been happening for ever you have literally a social security number that you're tracked yeah. you, have you have a uh, device right here that if I say, hey, I'm interested yep. in holding a log home, you know, I bet I can find a log it's home. It's going to pop up. <laughs> you know, it's recording you on. I know, it's so weird how that does. Like, yeah, it trips me out. It really does. But, I yeah. Like it. <laughs> so, that's us in a nutshell. I think we rambled enough. Um, we, uh, I think so. we can talk for a day straight, probably, but... You know, we'll leave it for the next episode. For the next episode, we are going to uh, wrap it up here and it's a pilot episode. But again, just in case it does air, remember you can email us at wpmsradio at gmail.com. Follow me on social media. Instagram is going to be at seriously Brittany. You can find me on Twitter, seriously Brit Deep. Uh, Daily, do you remember? It's always the way up here. She never remembers. See, this is the thing, guys. I never remember my stuff. So on Instagram, I'm J-L-E-A-M-123. And then Twitter, I'm just J-L-E-123, I believe. Um, Facebook's private. Not getting that information out. But find yeah. me on those. Um, you can email us here. Probably we'll answer anything. Uh, we'll go for anything. Yep. If you offend us, we're probably going to call you out. You know. Cool. We're here. We'll blast you. I'm good at that. So we'll just have fun. We'll roast you.